Lord Jesus, who confounded your enemies by covering in glory and splendor your body that had been most insulted and despised, grant us the grace to lead in your likeness a new, divine and immortal life. Grant us, O Lord, to realize in us the priceless gift of redemption, to grow more and more every day from virtue to virtue, until we come to you, O God, who are the source and the true life. Come, divine Saviour, into our hearts, as in the upper room. Repeat in us, as you did to the apostles. With your heavenly greeting, peace be with you. Show us, as in St. Thomas, your glorious wounds, and stay with us for ever. Amen. Let us pray. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who for our sake gave yourself up into the service of your parents, and to teach us true humility, carried by your mother into the temple, and there redeemed with the offerings of the poor, when the righteous Simeon and the prophetess Anna, gladdened by your presence, gave glorious witness concerning you. May the slightest breath of vanity never affect my innermost soul. May all arrogance be ever cast down. May all longing for the praise of men be extinguished. May all wantonness of self-conceit be quenched within me. Give me grace, O Lord, to flee any honour, to hate distinction and to submit myself with readiness to all men for your sake. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who as a little child did with your tender mother suffer persecution, and did not refuse to be carried as an exile fleeing into Egypt. Give me grace amidst the storms of adversity and the blasts of persecution and in misfortune to fly for refuge to you alone, to seek you, to call upon you. Grant that I may receive all things with gladness at your hands, may endure all things in meekness of heart, and may cleave with thanksgiving without wavering to you. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when you remained behind in the temple, your mother sought for sorrowing, and at length with joy found you sitting in the midst of the doctors, hearing and asking them questions. May you so give and communicate yourself to me, that I may never be separated from you, and never be without the comfort of your blessed friendship. Drive sloth from my heart, dispel any dullness that is displeasing in, my, in your sight. Grant me perfect devotion, and such an ardent thirst after piety, that my soul may be so affected and possessed by it, as never to feel satisfied with worshipping you. Praise, honour and glory be to you, who gave yourself up to live in concealment for thirty years, to be reputed by the Jews the son of Joseph the carpenter, and be subject to the commands of your mother and the same Joseph. May your grace, I beg you, root out and thoroughly pluck up from the innermost recesses of my heart any ambition and seeking of glory, that I may become belittled in my own eyes, and may love to be unknown and considered of no account, submitting myself to all, and obeying them for your honour. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who did not refuse to come to the River Jordan, and be baptised there by your servant John. May you thoroughly cleanse me by your merits in this life, that freed from all vices and sins, I may be filled with the love of you and long for my heavenly country. Make me, I beg you, before my soul quits this body, pleasing to you in all things, that, departing from this life, I may be for ever in heaven with you, to see you, to enjoy you, and to praise your holy name for ever and ever. Praise, honour, and glory be to you, O Christ, who for our sake dwelt in the wilderness amongst the wild beasts, 
and fasted and watched in prayer for forty days and forty nights, permitting yourself to be tempted by the devil, whom you overcame when angels came and ministered to you. Grant me grace to discipline, overcome and bring into subjection my sinful flesh with its evils affect evil affections. Give me grace to be instant in prayer and all other spiritual exercises, and grant that with your continual help I may completely overcome sins of gluttony and may escape the snares and schemes of the devil. Let no temptations, I beg you, defile me, nor separate me from you, but may they rather purify me and unite and join me with you. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who gave himself up to preach repentance, to call to you disciples, and from them choose the twelve apostles to be the especial heralds of the faith, gathering together the children of God that were scattered abroad. Draw me after you, and powerfully excite my heart to love you. Do not permit me to neglect the grace with which you called me, but make me ready to despise the world and all perishable things, following you, taking your humility and charity as my example. Give me grace to look for you alone, and with earnest longing to sigh continually after you. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall sing your praise.
Reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 17. Jesus said to his disciples, Stumbling blocks are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him to have a millstone tied around his neck and be thrown into the sea than for him to be the cause of one of these little ones to sin. Watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. Even if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times returns to you saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. So the Lord replied, If you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this black mulberry tree, Be pulled out by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Would any one of you say to your slave who comes in from the field after ploughing or shepherding sheep, Come at once and sit down for a meal. Would the master instead say to him, Get my dinner and make yourself ready to serve me while I eat and drink. Then you may eat and drink. He won't thank the slave because he did what he was told, will he? So you too, when you have done everything you are commanded to do, you should say, We are slaves and deserving of special praise. We have only done our duty. Now on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered the village, ten men with leprosy met him. While they stood at a distance, raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went along, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He fell with his face to the ground at Jesus' feet and thanked him. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus said, We're not ten cleansed, so where are the other nine? Was no one found to turn back and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to the man, Get up and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think we can all think of the stumbling blocks that we have encountered during our spiritual walk. Times when he have been when we have been tripped up by those who are supposed to be friends and supporting us. Sometimes these stumbling blocks can be people from the church itself. One of mine was a village priest who told me in no uncertain terms that I belong to him, to which I was able to reply, No, I belong to him. Seriously though, we have to be very careful that we do not cause our neighbour or family member to trip and fall. For Jesus was very clear here that it would place us in a very difficult position. If we live, love our neighbour as we were commanded, then we absolutely do not want to undermine their faith in any way. However, these things happen unintentionally, hence the warning to us about it. Take care, Jesus told us. Try and always be mindful of our weaker neighbours and think to provide them with a good example without undermining their fragile and embryonic faith. We are called to rebuke the sinner and then if he repents, forgive him as often as it takes. This is very hard indeed and I suspect that for many of us after a few problems, we would tend to walk away. But this is wrong, for it is not the gospel, message of the gospel. We are called to love, forgiving those who repent always. Yes, we should hate the sin, but like the Lord himself, love the sinner he came to save. Let us pray the prayer of the apostles, 
that our faith might every day be strengthened. Sometimes it's surely going to take a knock, but with prayerful attention it will thrive and flourish. True humility can be very hard to learn. We must remember always exactly who we are and not have overly inflated ideas of our own importance. For even the greatest among us is like dirt compared with God. The more we have been accustomed to enjoying the things of this world, the harder it can be to renounce their pleasures. Jesus had a simple message for his disciples in this episode, which Luke reported for us. Only the person who works over and above the extent of his duty can expect a reward. That is not to say that there would never be a reward for long and loyal service, however. But we need to remember that we are paid to do our duty, and we should not expect more than that. Yes, it is true it's nice to have a pat on the back after 40 years of work and receive a small gift from a grateful employer. But we need to accept that we have been paid throughout those 40 years, and we are not entitled to more than this. Instead, we should be humble and remember that we are only doing our duty. As Christians, our duty is boundless, for we cannot say, I have saved a soul, my duty is done, or I have preached fifty sermons, my duty is done. Not at all. It is our duty to go on doing these things until the very last possible moment. The Christian says, as long as I have wind in my lungs, I will preach for the Lord. The Jews associated leprosy with sin, being a punishment from God, and we have the precedent of the punishment given to Miriam for speaking against Moses in Numbers 12 as an example. It was only natural that Jesus, who came to take away the sins of the world, should seek out the leprous and heal them. Approaching the village, for the lepers were not allowed inside the village itself, but had to remain at the gate, we read that ten called out to Jesus asking for his mercy. No doubt tired from his journey, for he was in a mountain region on the borders of Galilee and Samaria. It would have been easy for him to wait, for him to tell them to wait until he had eaten and had rested. But that was not his way. Though tired, thirsty and hungry, he stopped to attend to their needs. They were told to go and present themselves to the priest in accordance with the law of Leviticus 13 and 14, being healed as they went. In much the same way that Naaman was told to go and wash in the Jordan in 2 Kings 5, the lepers were required to take a step of faith for themselves and do something to be made clean. There was, however, a small twist in this account. For of the ten that were presumably pronounced clean by the priest, only one saw fit to go back to Jesus and to thank him. More tellingly, the one who went back to Jesus was a Sumerian, the one who was despised by the Jews, giving rise to Jesus referring to him as a foreigner. We can sit in judgment of the other nine, but are we not also like them? How often do we pray and ask for a solution to a problem or guidance, and when this comes, forget to give thanks with the same vigour that we prayed in our asking. We have some telling words from Jesus. He told the returning Samaritan that his faith had made him well. Are we to presume that the others had their healing revoked? Not at all, for there is absolutely nothing to suggest this. And there is no incidence anywhere in the Gospel of Jesus ever reversing a miracle. The difference for this man is not only was his leprosy cured, but his faith made him well. So what exactly does this mean? To resolve this we need to return to the Greek, where we find that the word used has a primary meaning of delivered or saved and that the healing aspect is a secondary meaning. 
We can take it from this then that not only was the leprosy healed, but the man's soul was healed, forgiven, and in reconciliation with God. Let us pray. Almighty God, who show to those in error the light of your truth, to the intent that they may return into the way of righteousness, grant to all those that are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may renounce those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen.